My name is Peter Verschaffeld, and today I'm going to talk about the migration from a web app to a cross-platform desktop tool with minimal effort. Before we start, I would first like to introduce myself. I'm a PhD student at Ghent University NVIB under the supervision of Professor Peter Dabint and Professor Lennart Martens. I graduated as a Master in Computer Science in 2019 and I started my PhD in November of the same year. I'm currently working on the UniPad project. This situates itself on the verge of biology and computer science, two topics that catch my attention and that I'm deeply interested in. UniPad is a leading tool for the analysis of metaproteomic samples, a specific type of biological samples. UniPad is a highly used ecosystem that consists of a few different open source tools, each with their own advantages and disadvantages. During this talk, I will mainly be talking about the UniPad web application, which I'm going to demonstrate right now. This web application is currently the most popular tool that's available in the UniPad ecosystem. It requires no command line knowledge, it provides a straightforward graphical user interface, and it's easy to use. We can start an analysis by providing a list of peptides. These peptides are being analyzed immediately by UniPad and results are delivered shortly. If we take a look at the list on the right here, you can see all of the peptides. Each one of these items is one peptide and all of these um, peptides are taken into account during the analysis. The main goal of this web application is to enhance the insight of researchers into large datasets by providing them with interactive data visualizations, such as this sunburst. We currently support five different visualizations and users can easily switch between them using the buttons above. Unipep analyzes so-called metaproteomic samples and provides a list of all taxa and functions that are detected in this sample. Taxonomic information is mainly presented through these visualizations. Functional information, on the other hand, is presented by these summary tables below. Since the previous release of Unipept, we are also more and more working towards comparative analysis of samples, allowing researchers to detect interesting shifts in taxonomy and functionality between multiple samples. Web apps such as this one don't need to be installed on the user's system. Updates are always performed server-side and require no interaction from the user whatsoever. This means that all users are always working with the most recent version of our application and that we can fix bugs immediately, if required. Web applications are not ideal in all situations and are challenged with limitations that are posed by the web browser. First, only a limited amount of system memory is provided to a web application in order to guarantee stability of the browser and all other processes it's currently managing. Second, the persistent storage capabilities that a web browser has access to are very restricted. Local storage, for example, allows us to only store a few megabytes of key value pairs and use those as persistent storage. Some browsers even automatically erase the local storage content of web apps after seven days, making it very impractical to use. Lastly, another key problem that we stumbled upon when trying to improve Unipad was the lack of access to the local file system. We want to make the organization of multiple samples into projects possible. These projects can then be easily shared with other researchers. These projects can also grow quite large in size and thus need to be stored on the local file system. In order to overcome all of these challenges, we decided to build a desktop application. Our novel Unipep desktop application needs to provide at least the same set of features as the web application, and more. We aim to drastically increase the maximum size of samples that can be analyzed, provide a mechanism to compare samples to each other, and increase end-user control over the analysis process. All of these things can be achieved by building such a des desktop application. Please note that these applications, on the other hand, have their own set of challenges that we need to deal with as good as possible. Now the main challenge that I'm going to discuss today is how we can build a desktop application starting from our existing web app with a minimal effort. One of my teachers once told me that a good computer scientist should be lazy and that reinventing the wheel should be avoided at all costs. This is exactly what we're going to do here. We want to build a proper desktop application with as less work as possible. One of the most important things that we need to do to achieve this goal would be to optimally share the existing code base between the web app and the desktop app. If we succeed in doing this, we end up with less code that needs to be maintained in the future, which, in turn, frees up extra time that can be invested in new features and improvements. 
The shared code base also allows us to easily integrate new features that were introduced to the desktop app into our web existing web app, and vice versa. There are a few key enabling technologies that allow us to achieve this goal. These will be discussed in more detail throughout the rest of this talk. The first of these key enabling technologies is Electron. Electron is a framework that lets us create desktop applications using JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and other web-based technologies. This is an ideal solution for our case, since nearly everything in our code base exists of web-based technologies. Electron applications can be packaged and distributed on all main operating systems. Under the hood, Electron uses Chromium to render the application and provides access to Node.js APIs. Node.js allows us to directly access a user's local file system, already solving a first big challenge we encountered with the web application. Electron also puts us in complete control of the al allocated compute resources that are available to the internal Chromium renderer. This allows us to increase the amount of memory that's available to our application, overcoming another web browser limitation. Migrating our web app to an Electron app is not just a matter of copying the web files and packing them together as an Electron app. It should not be obvious to users that they are indeed working with a custom web application. Instead, we want to provide them with the look and feel of a true desktop app. Large parts of the user interface of the web app can directly be reused in the desktop app. It's only the glue between these standalone elements that needs to be implemented differently for the web and the desktop app. All code related to the analysis of a sample can be reused and will be exactly the same in both apps. All code related to the local storage of samples and analysis results will be different, since the desktop app will be storing analysis results offline and the web app will not. We followed in essence a three-step approach to build a desktop app from the existing web app. Now over to the first step of our solution. The old codebase of our web application consisted of JavaScript, HTML and CSS files that were glued together. Interactivity was provided by jQuery and plain old JavaScript. Most common JavaScript functions were extracted in different files in order to encourage the reuse of existing code. But most of the code that drives the interface, however, was packed in a single file, one such file per web page. These JavaScript files consisted of event handlers, DOM bindings, etc. This doesn't sound ideal, but it was simply the way that interactivity was provided to web pages about 10 years ago. Since a lot of the functionality and basic interface elements will be shared between our new desktop app and the existing web app, we decided it was time to restructure the existing code into view components. The view component system is an abstraction that allows us to build large-scale applications composed of small, self-contained and often reusable components. Other component-based web frameworks exist, like for example Angular ES or React, but we chose Vue so that it is praised for its simplicity and excellent third-party component libraries, such as Vuetify. Note that all of the following steps can also be applied to AngularJS or React. If we think about it, almost any type of application interface can be abstracted into a tree of components. Since the web app and the desktop app share most of their interface, it makes a lot of sense for us to restructure the web app as a collection of these components. The desktop app can then, later on, reuse the components that it requires and provide a user experience similar to the web app, but with occasional differences. The components shown here are good examples of standalone components that can be reused by the web and the desktop app. Each of these has a clear interface and can be used in isolation from other components. The next step in the process of sharing web components between both applications consists of isolating these components into a library. This allows us to import the library into each project and consume the required components on demand. All components are first compiled with the TypeScript compiler to JavaScript. Babel is also being used here to ensure that all JavaScript features that are not yet implemented by the browser can be executed. The resulting JavaScript files, together with the style sheets and the HTML content, will then be bundled using Webpack into a single JavaScript file. This file is then finally distributed through NPM and can be imported by both applications. The final step in the process is straightforward and simply consists of importing the bundled web components into both applications. Both applications import the desired components only and glue them together. Since we're using npm for the distribution of our package, 
it's possible to pin one of the apps to a specific version of the components library and to easily upgrade the library's dependencies if a new version shows up. Before I continue the talk, I would first like to showcase our desktop app. The desktop app has been in development for about a year now and will soon be released to the public. You will notice that a lot of the components used in this app are very similar to the web application. Project and sample management, however, are completely new and are only available to the desktop app. Switching between samples is a lot easier, thanks to the Project Explorer sidebar here on the left. Samples can be arranged into studies and multiple studies make up one project. This application is also more powerful than the web app. I've been able to analyze samples with up to 1 million peptides as opposed to about 50,000 peptides with the web app. If we take a look at the analysis results of one sample in particular, you can see that all of the visualizations and the summary tables from the web app are also present. The comparison of multiple samples moved to a separate page and is much more flexible than in the web app, although it is still using the same basic UI components. Now, if we close the application and we restart it, you will see that if we load one of our projects, it is loaded immediately. This is the result of the more advanced offline storage capabilities that we were able to pursue with the help of Electron's Node.js API. To finish up this presentation, I would like to share some tips and tricks with you that I learned along the way. One issue that we encountered with this approach is that locally debugging the isolated components is not trivial. There are three main paths that you can pursue. The first option consists of building a dummy project as part of your isolated components library. You can serve the library itself and start twiddling with the components there. This might require extra work as some of the code required to glue together the components is not present in the library itself. The second option should actually always be included and simply consists of defining unit tests for all components. This can easily be achieved by using the view test utils library in combination with Jest. This option, however, is not suitable for quickly prototyping components and fiddling around with their appearance. The final option consists of building the library in development mode with automatic recompile on changes. All compiled files are then symlinked into your project of so choice, like for example the desktop app. This app will then automatically update when the um, linked files are recompiled. Publishing the application on macOS or Windows is not straightforward. If your application package is not properly signed, the OS will strongly discourage new users from installing the app. On macOS, you get to see the window on the left here. The only way to then open the application anyway is to open up the macOS settings menu and explicitly allowing the app through the security menu. On Windows, we see a very similar thing happening. Smart Screen scans all apps before they are started and blocks them if they are not properly signed. You can force open the application by clicking the More Info button and then selecting Run Anyway. These measures, however, will strongly discourage a new user to start using your app. A different approach for signing the application is required for both macOS and Windows. On macOS, the application needs to be notarized, which requires an Apple developer account. Such an account costs around 99 euros per year. On Windows, a third-party code signing certificate is required. These can be obtained from various certificate authorities and prices range from 99 euros to 499 euros, depending on the type and the trust level of your certificate. No code signing mechanism is active on most popular Linux distributions and no extra measures are thus required on this platform. The app will just run as it is. Electron also comes with an auto-updating mechanism by default. This mechanism, however, does not support Linux and it requires a lot of configuration before it works. That's why I chose to use Electron Builder, an open source package that handles application packaging for all major platforms and that includes a built-in auto-updating mechanism. Electron Builder can also be easily integrated with continuous integration environments, such as the free GitHub Actions system. This in turn allows us to build the application on all three major platforms, macOS, Windows and Linux, without the hassle of cross-platform build tools. GitHub Actions supports all of these operating systems by default. 
Note that, in order for the automatic updates to work on macOS, the app needs to be notarized. Otherwise, a validation error will occur and the update will fail. I decided to use GitHub releases to publish all new releases of the application. Electron Builder automatically scans the releases on GitHub when your application starts and directly updates the application if an update is available. Since we are using our GitHub repository for the releases, we don't need to set up an extra server and this could save us quite a lot of money. New updates are completely downloaded and installed in the background, without user intervenience. The user is notified once the update is done and the most recent version will automatically be used the next time the application is restarted. One of the big advantages of the web application was the ability to push updates server-side. If we decide to update the web application, all users are automatically using the latest version. Using the approach that I described above, we are however able to closely mimic the web application's update behavior in our desktop application. I would like to thank you for your attention. If you're interested in trying out the migration of a web app to a desktop app yourselves, feel free to take a look at our repositories on GitHub. They are completely open source and you are free to use them whenever you like. Stay tuned for the Q&A if you would like to know more about this. Thank you very much, Peter. That was a fantastic talk. Um, wow, investing 200 euros into publishing apps, open source apps, that's quite an investment. Is there a story behind that? Um, well, um, since we want people to, to, to start using our applications and, um, they are strongly discouraged by the OS when they first download the application, we decided that, that it was, uh, necessary to invest this money and, um, make it as smooth as possible for new users to start using the app. Um, it's not strictly necessary. Uh, everyone can just download it and, um, yeah, explicitly force the OS to run the app any, anyway. Um, but I think that will discourage quite a lot of users and it will, it will not lead to a very, a very, um, yeah, a very practical way of setting up the application on your local system. Yeah. It lowers you... the barrier to, to use it, especially because, uh, most users will be people in life sciences, which may not be that tech savvy and know what to do when they get a pop-up from the operating system saying this is not secure. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and yet another important, um, factor in this, in this thing is that, um, all Mac OS updates or automatic updates of the application are not supported when the application is not properly signed. So this would mean that uh, users need to manually download new versions of the application again for the OS to open the app um, before being able to to use the latest version. Mm. Do you do you know if that is two hundred euros you're going to be having to pay forever now, or do Microsoft and Apple provide some sort of program for open source projects that? Will um, uh, reduce costs. Um, well, on um, on Windows, it is the case that if we submit the app through the Microsoft App Store or the Windows Store, I'm not sure what it's called um, right now. Um, we can actually submit it for free, and it is automatically signed um, by Microsoft servers. Um, and I don't think there are differences for open source apps or closed source apps. Um, on macOS, I don't think there's there's any way to submit them uh, without without signing the app. Um, and since we figured to to just um, yeah publish the app ourselves and just distribute it ourselves, uh, we decided to to pay the the hundred euros on on Windows and uh, and distribute it through our GitHub page. Okay. Um, now a couple of questions from chats. Uh, will the, from Annalise, will the desktop app allow, also allow metagenomics data analysis through the Unipept metagenomics analysis pipeline? No, this is a separate project, um, which has some shared, um, functionality, but for now we won't be including that. For now, it suggests maybe you've, you've got that lined up for the future. Uh, well, we, the. Genomics is generally a lot more data than the metaproteomics. Um, we're focusing for now on getting our command line tool out 
um, and then maybe thinking about uh, usability and including um, including user interface stuff like that. Okay. Um, now, how computationally intensive is the analysis that you're running? I, I got the impression later in the talk that it was previously running entirely in the browser. Um, well, the analysis itself is actually um, is actually pre-computed on our server. So uh, we have our own Unipep database, which is derived from the Uniprot database, um, containing all Swissprot and Tremble um, entries. And this pre-processing step uh, takes about a week now. So once a new version of Uniprot is available, we pre-process um, the, the, the new, the new Uniprot version, produce our Unipep database, and then um, our, our server API is used by the web application to query the database. Um, so most of the, of the analysis is actually run beforehand and it's just the aggregation of all the results and the preparation of all the visualizations that's entirely done um, in browser and in, in the desktop app. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering how nice TypeScript and Node is to write desktop applications as opposed to web applications. Is it, is it, is it uh, a difficult fit to write desktop applications? It's sort of tailored, or at least JavaScript is tailored for web applications. Is it, is it a difficult fit to write desktop applications? Um, well, uh, when using the, the, the Electron, um, the Electron system, it's actually, it, it works quite well since, um, since most of the APIs that are only supported on desktop are um, exposed through Node.js modules, it's just a matter of importing the right modules and um, using them like you would use any other module in JavaScript. So, for example, if you'd like to write a file to the file system, you just import the file system module, and then you can call file system dot um, write file, and it's 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 as simple as that. So I don't think there's there are huge differences between uh, JavaScript or TypeScript and other uh, standard programming languages like Python or um, or Java for uh, for desktop applications. Um, of course, there are some some things that yeah that 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 hint or that um, that are derived from the the web based nature of JavaScript and TypeScript. Um, but it doesn't really hinder the, the development process, in my opinion. Okay. You are, of course, helped by both the Electron framework on one mm -hmm. hand and the Vue front-end framework on the other hand. So uh, those things push you in a certain direction, uh, which help uh, quite a bit. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if there's anything specific you did to get a desktop look and feel. Was that, was that a lot of extra work or is that packaged in with the framework that you're using? Um, so um, the, the UI of the desktop app itself um, has entirely been developed by me, um, but uh, we used the Beautify framework, which already provides quite a lot of, of different components, um, like uh, lists or buttons or all, all sorts of things are already provided by the framework. Um, but the sidebar itself and the navigation between the different pages and all that, um, has been implemented by by ourselves, um, and that's actu actually the the thing that differs the most from the desktop app and the web app. So most of the the, the visualization components, the the data entry components, those are all the same. Um, it's just the project management and the sample selection, sample creation. Those those things um, are are a little bit different between both both projects. Uh, maybe maybe uh, to add to that, so so you have Vue, which is a front-end framework which couples the, the data and responsiveness. And then what Peter talks about, uh, uh, which is uh, Vuetify, is uh, a plugin on top of Vue, uh, which comes with a, a bunch of built-in uh, UI components, which are uh, which follow the Google Material Design uh, language. Uh, and of course, that helps to, to get a, a good native look and feel. Yeah. And um, some of the features that are really desktop specific, like um, changing the, the, the icon in the taskbar or displaying progress in the taskbar, all those things are actually provided by Electron. So you can just okay. import uh, some of the Electron APIs and, um, and set those things yourselves. Um, 
notifications, um, operating system notifications are also supported by Electron. Um, so that, that's really handy. Okay, we've got another question in the chat. Uh, do you know of any apparently importantly free courses for um, someone completely new to Vue and TypeScript who presumably wants to learn how to write desktop applications with these technologies? Um, oh, well, I think the tutorials on both the Vue and the TypeScript website are quite good. Um, so that's a really good starting point. Yeah, th those were actually the same uh, same ones that I was that I wanted to su suggest. Okay, and in the remaining minutes, I wonder if you would mind elaborating a little bit on the the constraints or requirements or trade offs behind your technology decisions. Um, well, um, so for the. Um, Maybe if I can have one constraint is still that that's, we still rely on our server. So while it is a desktop application, we still call the internal API just as the web application. So you're still dependent on the internet to do an analysis, uh, to fetch the data. The, the visualization, the interactivity is in the desktop part, but fetching the data there, you need, still need the internet for. And for some projects, some people are not allowed to send their um, experimental data over the internet, so that's still an issue. And that's something we're working on in the future to have your own uh, local database so you can uh, call a local API instead of a web API. Hmm. Is, th is there any level of security guarantee you could provide these people to allow you to send their data over the internet, or that's just a hard absolute no? What do you mean with security? We don't store anything from any request except for the, the web server logs, which are kept for a few days. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we can't identify um, which peptides or which data comes from, from uh, which sample. So we can absolutely do nothing with the data we receive, even if we would want to. Hmm. Okay, wonderful. Thank you very much, both of you, for uh, joining us.